Yes, sir. I'll look at that and I will um, come up with a schedule and talk to you about it and get with Howard. Okay. And, and so there do is. We have a, do we currently have a schedule, Sheila? Um, not on paper, no, sir. Okay. Thank Perry, you. That, Perry that operates the uh, machine is, is no certification to operate that, correct? Perry having a certification, he is. He's not, there's no certification to operate the track. No, sir. He just has an extensive experience. Okay. Hmm. All right. Sheila, you, know, you, Sheila, you may want to point out about the number of uh, private individuals we've had to come in that have taken down houses themselves. That may help, help some also. We have, um, so. Um, of the, the number that we had, um, eight, eight of those uh, property owners have fixed their houses. Um, eight so of the 42. Them because they're livable, sir. Eight of the 42. Eight of the 42. And then one... And three of them, um, the property owner um, pulled a permit and they were they took them down themselves. So we, we've taken down nine, they've taken down three? They've taken down three, we've taken down nine, and then eight of them have been rehabbed. So Sheila, do you have a list of the criteria that, that are used to uh, determine whether it should come down? No, um, Alex, um, when he was in the position as building official, he identified the properties that needed to be removed. So does Alex then have a list of the criteria that need to be used? That would be an Alex question. Alex? Yes, sir. You go by the, um, the building code and the property maintenance code, um, and that, that it, you know, lays out the criteria of what it takes to take it down. But a lot of the, some of these houses, I agree with Ms. Sheila Backus aren't necessarily on the list to take down. It's just that the, the property owners will allow the property just to sit there. And this is a way for the city to get them to move to do something with them. And that's what it's done. Um, once they're posted, then the property owners start calling to find out what do they need to do to keep the property instead of the city taking it down or having to be taken down. And that's when we get permits issued and they actually rehab the property. So. All of them are not to the shape or to the point that they need to come down, but it does get them moving to do something with them without them just sitting there as a, a vacant property for, for squatters to squat in, <coughs> drug dealers to uh, do drug deals in, or whatever the case may be. So, like I said, we don't always take them down, but it does get them moving to do something with them to clean up the neighborhoods. Okay, thank you. Sheila, do you see any of that activity going on from any of those that are on the list where you've got any movement for homeowners trying to move forward with that? Um, I do have um, three more property owners that are working on um, rehabbing. They're, it, they're still in the process. Uh, I talked to somebody else yesterday and I've talked to two people that are interested in getting on the um, demolition assistance program and I've sent information to them. And I assume you track that? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes, sir. How many were rehabbed? How many have been rehabbed already? Eight. Yes, Eight. Folks, we just got some news. Um, I got a, a text from the state of South Carolina Rural Infrastructure Authority that the city of Darlington has just been approved for the East Broad Street sewer project for half a million dollars. I just texted everybody the announcement. It's a very good day for city of Darlington. That's a big deal. Good, very good. We can fix the hole. Uh, we can bid it out now. Yes, we can. Good. So that's, uh, that's good news. Are you all ready to move on for uh, public yeah, work? I would just like to see, make sure that that process is uh, noted, that that process is taken in, in strong consideration to make sure that when we're given the authority to go and get them down, let's get as many rehabbed or down as we can. And again, if they if they're don't need to be taken down, don't go take it down. Uh, but, you know, encourage them to, to, to get it down, get it fixed. But if they can come, if they need to come on down, it's going to give them down. Right, yes, thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, next up, we've got the uh, street and sanitation and stormwater departments with the superintendent, uh, Alex Ganey. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I hope everyone's doing well tonight. I'm gonna try to go through these numbers with you and um, I'm gonna go through them. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, we're gonna start off with 6.30, talk about the salaries a little bit. Um, adopted last year was 245, 476. Um, we're estimating 213, 371 is where we're gonna be at. And we're proposing a 301, 386 for next year. Um, as Howard said, I moved down to street and sanitation back in February. Um, so next budget year, my salary will actually be moved to street and sanitation. Um, so this is where my salary is going to come into play. And also we've uh, got a 2%, I believe, rate increase or um, pay raise increase figured in there, hopefully for the employees down in this department and all departments. Um, the insurance and bonds, all of that's pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, toward insurance, workers' comp, retirement, Social Security. Um, adopted for this year, total was 371, 380. Looking like we're going to come in about 324,039. And there again, for next year, we're proposing 436, 199 to, to cover my salary and the 2% increases. Um, operating expenses. We uh, got office and printing supplies or printing, printing and office supplies. We budgeted 500, um, we're at 90, uh, 960. Um, operating expense, auto operating expense is 28,000. We're at 21,750 is where we're um, projecting to come in at the end of the year. Um, electricity and water, electricity, water and gas, 140. We're looking at 166,937. What this is, is this is going to be street lights around the city, all of your street lights that the city is responsible for, um, and that kind of stuff. All of the utilities the city is responsible for, um, water, gas, and, and the street lights. So that's why that's a little bit higher. Um, and then you got your telephone. Um, we're about 530 over there. We're going to keep it at 2,000 for next year. Um, machinery and equipment is 2,400. We're at 3,421. We're going to leave it at 2,400 for next year. Um, small hand tools, we're under by about 450, but we're going to leave it at 1,000. Hardware building materials, uh, we're at 255. We'd budgeted 800. Painting supplies, 400, and we're at 277. Cement and masonry materials, 3,000. We're at 400. We're going to leave it at 3,000 because we're gonna have some stuff we're gonna to need to do there. Asphalt supplies, um, 7,153 and we're at 4,996. We're gonna leave it at 7,000 because we're gonna be doing some, some repairs um, to some, some of the roads, that kind of stuff. Radio supplies, 400. We haven't spent anything in radio, but we're gonna keep it at 400 for next year because I'm looking at putting radios back in these trucks so I can communicate with these drivers. So if something's missed and we get phone calls, then I can contact the drivers and find out what's going on and get them to go back and fix it or pick up whatever they've missed. Uniforms, we're at 4,800, what, um, what we budgeted, we're at 5,632. We're gonna put that at 6,000 next year is what we're proposing. Um, cleaning and sanit um, sanitary supplies is five, uh, 350, we're at 270, we're gonna put that at 400 for next year. Um, chemicals, 1250 is what's budgeted. We're at 422. This is going to be the chemicals that we use around uh, pesticides, um, stuff to control ants, stuff to control weeds. Um, 1250 is what we budgeted. We're at 422. We're going to leave that at 1250 for next year. Physicals, 500. Um, we spent 445. We're going to put it at 600. This is going to be for our CDL drivers and that kind of stuff. Um, physicals that are required. Signs is 1500, we spent 728. We're gonna put that at 1200 for next year. Iron casting and street steel, that's gonna be a thousand. We're gonna leave it at a thousand. Vehicle insurance is going up. Um, we had projected or budgeted 8119, we're at 11301. So we're gonna um, um, put that at 11301 for next year. Building insurance is $129. The sweeper payment, um, 20,000 is what we budgeted, 10,000 um, is where we're looking at for the end of the year. 
we're gonna put it at 20,000 for next year. Then the mower and plow tractor, stunt machines, that kind of stuff, um, 4,500, we spent 2,750. We're going to leave it at 4,500. Other operating expense is 15,000. We're going to be at 12,400. We're going to leave it at 15,000. That's going to put us at a total of 247, 153, a little over, and we had um, budgeted 242,801. We're going to bump that up a little bit next year to 266,880. Um, our capital outlay um, is building and fixed equipment budgeted 8947 or 1600 we're going to um, drop that down a little bit next year to 7000 office machines 1500 we hadn't spent anything we're going to leave it at 1500 for next year um, grapple loader payments our payment is 25000 we've spent 15000 we're going to leave that at 25000 next year machines and equipment um, 45000 we are at um, 30,000. We're going to leave it at 45 for next year. Miscellaneous equipment, 4,500. We spent 23. We're going to put that at five for next year. Paving is 10,000. We spent 7,287. We're going to leave it at 10,000 for next year. There again, radio and equipment. Radios and equipment, 400. We hadn't spent anything, but we're going to leave that at 400. And then the storm drain extension. Um, 5,000 is what we budgeted, 47.55 spent, and we're going to leave that at 5,000 for next year. Um, grand total is going to be uh, um, 714,528. Looks like we're going to finish the year at about 632,134. We're going to up that next year a little bit to 801.979. Um, anybody got any questions about 630? Alex, this this is Howard. Um, on line number 385, your 40, your 45 to 30 to 45. If we went down to 30, why are we going back to 45? Is that just a number you're trying to maintain, or you have you anticipate something happening? Um, Howard, can you? I I can answer that. We were trying to keep costs lower with some larger line items, just because that's the the time of year we were operating in. We have low cash flow in December, January, and February where property taxes come in. Sometimes we'll use these items closer to the end of the budget year and we'll split the cost between one budget year and another, <clears throat> such as if we're buying large pieces of equipment, we'll go in together and buy them with the water department and the recreation department, such as uh, zero turn mowers or possibly trucks from the state of South Carolina. And so that's one reason that is as low as it is. Um, it's just to, it's to help cash flow during certain times of year and we get better deals when we go with state purchasing and we buy multiple departments uh, such as water, sewer, street sanitation and recreation. I, I hope that answers. It does, thank you. And my next question was, you have nine FTEs in your departments, Alex? Um, we Did have, I have that right? Yeah, that's going, yeah, we've got, let's see. Total is going to be nine, yes, sir. Okay. Just want to make sure I got it right. Thank you. Okay. Alex, John Milling, I just had a, a question. <clears throat> we have line item 235 as asphalt supplies at $7,000. And then we've got, I think it's 388, which is the paving, sidewalks and paving. Um, how do those two fit together or what's the difference between them or how do they fit together? Um, well, I'm gonna try to answer it. Like I said, I just took this department over a couple of months ago and we've been trying to, I've been trying to go over these numbers to try to figure some of this stuff out myself. Um, I do know that the street and sanitation department, um, in the past, the street and sanitation department, whenever water and sewer had, um, when they made repairs in the road, in the past, the uh, water and sewer department, or excuse me, the street and sanitation department would fix it. At some point in time, the water and sewer department started making those repairs themselves. Um, now we're gonna start back doing that. Matter of fact, I've gotten a list in the last couple of days of streets that water and sewer have cut, made repairs, and we're gonna start fixing those. Um, now, from my understanding, if water and sewer repaired a road, they would come to 
uh, street and sanitation and get a PO or something for the asphalt that they would go get to make the repair. Um, so I'm not exactly sure 100%, you know, why we have two different line items. Maybe Howard can answer that. Um, but why we have two actual or separate line items for asphalt supplies and then the asphalt and, um, and sidewalk repair stuff. Um, uh, yes, sir. That that's supposed to be a SC, A lot of that's supposed to be SODOT jobs, and we're just supposed to go and 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 work out in certain areas for the sidewalks because almost all the sidewalks in the city of Darlington belong to SCDOT, and we were just supposed to go in and help them on some sidewalk projects. As far as asphalt is concerned, that was to be just used for city-owned streets, and the uh, water and sewer department was uh, going to handle the the paving for work that they did for water sewer cuts. How, Howard, when you at, when you say that you're supposed to just help them out with the sidewalks, are we reimbursed or are we putting out funds for that? Sir, we've, and I only speak from my time here, which is 15 years, we've never been reimbursed by uh, DOT for sidewalks, except for the streetscape projects where we have the brick pavers on the square and on South Main and on Cashua Streets. That's the only time I've ever known DOT to reimburse us for anything now. Also DOT did sidewalks on South Main Street. Uh, we paid $100,000 in for that project, which is the sidewalks now that go to Walmart. Those are the only projects I know of where we have been reimbursed by DOT for sidewalks. But if it's something that they've required or they've caused, we have we asked for reimbursement or has it always been we've been the ones who initiated the, the calls for the sidewalks? Um, we we initiated, I, like I say, I've never known them to reimburse us for, for just the minor sidewalk work that we have done over the years. Have we asked? Yes, we have. Okay, thank you. Kevin, you can add that to your list. Because <laughs> we're going to write a letter. I hope DOT's listening. Uh, sure. I have a I have a question, um, Alex. The uh, salaries I know you, you said is is going to go to three hundred one. That's including your salary. Uh, Sheila has said the salaries were reduced on the other one, which was reducing your salaries. But um, salaries from the coast department only went down six thousand, and the other ones have gone up. So it's, it's about it's still about fifty thousand. But the two sal the two salaries combined together from the two departments is still $50,000 more. Well, and I, I don't want to, you know, Howard might want to elaborate on that a little bit. I will say that, um, you know, minors, I tell you what, Howard, will you, I'm not exactly sure what all y'all have decided for codes enforcement. Um, I know you, you ran something across me the other day, um, past, as far as what you were talking about doing, I'm not sure exactly what you're doing. Um, so I don't want to speak on, on codes enforcement. I, I do know that we're moving all of my salary down to street and sanitation as of July 1st. Um, so I will not- But we still, have, we still have Karen there, correct? We do have Karen here, yes sir. So now that was my other question is we had a, a Karen was a department head, now we have two department heads in sanitation. And we no, still have two department heads in sanitation. She's, she's not the department head. I'm the department but, head. But I, I know that, but I'm saying that she was a department head and she's still there. The China, your department head. So now we have two people that one was and one is and still there. Um, yes, sir. I mean, she's she's the assistant. She she basically runs the office and handles the paperwork and answers phone calls um, is what she's doing now. She's the office clerk. But the salaries have stayed the same. Um, as Mr. Mayor, as I mentioned to you before we uh, started these sessions online, personnel, I'd be much more comfortable talking about yeah. in executive session, sir. Well, that's, or, that's, that's fine, but I'm just saying this, $50,000 is a big question to ask. And so I want it because people are watching, they're calling us, and I want to know that, you know, um, but usually got, personnel I, is not I fight, I fight for the, I fight for everybody to make some money, but and those fifty thousand dollars is just a big discrepancy there. Where that's at, so uh, if we can clarify that later. Be fine. 
we just have to be very careful about talking specifically when it comes to staff members because you can't talk about that publicly. I'm not asking for anybody specific thing, but there's fifty thousand dollars. We don't need to roll by this and uh, and act like it was not. It was well, I understand, not. Mayor, but you're specifically talking about the former um, assistant manager, so we are specifically yeah. talking about people. So we just got to be careful. Yeah. Yes, and you're calling names. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Stop. Well, I want to. I've asked that a number of times why why there's still two people there. So, all right. And and I will specify on um, live TV. I told everybody when I became mayor, I will call names. All right. Um, <clears throat> because we're here to save the taxpayers' money. It's we got to make sure we save money, money, but we also had to be very careful because you called okay. names to get us in lawsuits. Yeah. All right. But uh, we'll clarify that. Just make sure we know what's going on there. All right. Um, okay. Thank you. Is that it for six thirty? Ready to move on to six forty? Yes. Okay. All right. We'll go to six forty. All right. There again, we're talking about salaries. We start off with salaries. Um, six forty. Um, we had adopted two fifty four five forty nine. We're going to finish out the year. Looks like at two fifty one six twenty seven. Um, we're going to um, propose 305-148 for next year. Um, and I'll explain that. What we're doing is, and when we get into 660, maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. 660 in the past has been the shop or garage for the, the city of Darlington. Um, that was the department that, or the, the department that did operate it out of. And that department had a mechanic um, and, and you know, had his salary. We're actually going to move, be moving his salary to 640 so that we can free up department 660 for stormwater um, starting in, in um, July 1st. So that's why those salary, the salaries have increased on that side um, is because we're moving the mechanic salary to 640. So he, he will no longer be under 660. Um, then you've got your insurance and bonds, toward insurance, workers' comp, retirement, um, it's going to bring it to budgeted this year was 381279. We're going to finish out the year around 375077. But next year, with that salary increase and the um, workers' comp and the Social Security and all that retirement, it's going to bump it to 457898 is what we're proposing for next year. Um, then you've got your auto operating expense. Um, the 60,071, we're at 68,873. We're going to run that 69,000 next year. The uh, electricity, water, and gas, 1,200. We haven't spent anything. We're going to leave it at, or we're going to drop it down a little bit to 1,000 next year. Telephone, 500. We spent 225. We're going to drop that to 400. Machinery and equipment, 200. We spent 598. We're going to drop, I mean, it's 2,000. I'm sorry, we spent 598. We're going to leave that at 2000 next year. Uniforms, 5500 We spent $7,560. we are going to leave it at $7,600 or um, propose $7,600 for next year. Chemicals, $400. We spent $250. We're going to leave it at $400. Physicals, $400. Um, we spent $300. We're going to propose $500 for next year. Vehicle insurance is $4,704. We spent $4,944. We're going to Proposed 4944 for next year. Building insurance 2000. We haven't spent anything. We're going to leave it at 2000 for next year. Um, other operating expenses 4447 proposed or budgeted. We spent a little over 6000. We want to bump that to 5000 next year. Allied waste roll carts. Um, we budgeted 206000. We spent 259392. We're going to um, proposed 250000 for that line item next year. And then commercial landfill charges, um, we budgeted 18000 We spent $21,078. Uh, we are going to bump that to twenty one one next year, which would take us to a total of 305 222 budget this year. We probably finish out the year around 369 235 and we're going to propose 363 944 for next year. Um, and then the capital outlay, trash truck payment, 15000 We spent 10. 
We leave it at 15 for next year. Um, machines and equipment, 38,000. We haven't spent anything yet. Um, don't um, expect to spend anything. We'll finish out the year zero. So we're going to leave it at 38,000 for next year. Miscellaneous equipment, 4,000. Haven't spent anything. We're going to leave it at 4,000. Then uh, uh, automobile expenses, 10,000. Haven't spent anything. We're going to drop that eight next year. So that's going to put our grand total for everything at 753,506. We're budgeted this year. Looks like we're going to finish up around 754,312. And I'm going to increase it to 886, 842 next year if what's proposed. And that's going to be 640. Any questions? Alex, line item 386, quantify miscellaneous equipment, please. Um, there again, Howard, can you, I'm not sure what we're using this miscellaneous equipment for. It could be anything that's related to uh, garbage or trash pickup, and I'm not specific with the specific names or some of the uh, machines that they use down there. I'm sorry, um, but we have over the years um, had problems, let's say, with uh, the arm on one machine that doesn't uh, work properly. And I, if you can see my arm going back up like this, it's, uh, I, again, I, I don't know the terms, I'm sorry, but- uh, On the cherry picker? Uh, correct, yeah, if, if that's not working like that, we would sometimes put it in there. Um, that covers also sometimes, let's say, repairs for uh, a mower or repair for a weed eater or repair for, um, maybe not a weed eater, but uh, some equipment that, that doesn't fall in some of the larger categories. Or sometimes we have stress, metal stress on different uh, containers because it's used repetitively. So that, that's for sometimes welding that's need, that needs to be done. Okay, thank you. I have a question about 293, the contract for the roll carts. Are we leasing those from Allied Waste or how does that work? No, sir, we own, go ahead, How were you fixing to say something? Uh, no, you, you go ahead. We actually own the roll carts. We actually just bought a uh, new shipment of roll carts. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy how these roll carts get damaged. Um, I mean, they, it's, it's crazy. But anyway, uh, we do not lease the roll carts from Allied. We own the roll carts that we use. Um, Allied provides the, um, the dumpsters, and that's what they come in and actually dump is the dumpsters. We handle the roll carts for commercial, and we handle the roll carts for residential. So we are paying Allied for pickup service of the commercial containers? Yes, sir. I think that's what... Sorry. When we talked several weeks ago, that's what we were talking about while we were trying to increase those rates, the dumpster rates, because um, a lot of that stuff we're going in the hole on. So we need to increase those rates so that we're not going in the hole. I was going to say it's time for us to bid those services out again uh, that we have with Allied. We're not, the contract has expired, so we can bid that out at any time and take competitive bids on what they do for us. We have enough information to do that at this time? We would probably need to put together a, a, a bid prospectus to send out. Um, that could be done in the next 60 days. I've got a lot of the information on that. I went back and did some digging and found where it was put out for bids years ago. So we can take that and just kind of update it and, um, and we can put it out. I've also been looking at putting residential out for bids just to see where that would come in at and see if we could save the city money there as well. I was just thinking if we could do it in 30 days to get it in this fiscal year for the, just have it ready for this fiscal year is the reason I asked. Well, most of, I've talked to a couple of the companies and of course Allied, they're not, they don't want us to put it out for bids. They're, they're wanting to talk to us to see if they need to do something to reduce rates or whatever to help us out and try to keep the business. But I told them it was only fair to the customers that we service which we contract to them to make sure that we put it out for bid every three to five years to make sure we're getting the competitive, the best rate we can possibly get for our customer. Um, I told them it wasn't that we were trying to get rid of them or that we were unsatisfied with their services. 
We just want to make sure that we get the best rate possible. Um, I mean, I don't, as far as their services, I think we're getting pretty good services from them. Um, so, but we do need to put it out for bids and I've gotten information to start putting that together. Thank you. Any other questions on 640? We don't have any other questions on 640. We'll move on to 660. All right. Like I said a few minutes ago, 660, um, 2019-20 budget year, it was the shop. Um, we're trying to transition all that over to 640 um, and create a department which would be 660 for stormwater. Um, like I said before, um, stormwater, we we pulled a little bit out of this department and a little bit out of that department, water and sewer being that department, to try to make stormwater, um, you know, go. And, you know, I, I've said before, I don't believe in robbing Peter to pay Paul. I felt like that if we were going to have a truck and we were going to have two employees working on that truck, that we needed to have a department for stormwater to be able to um, operate on its own and not have to pull money out of a couple of different departments to make it operate. So in talking to Howard, we decided to make 660, uh, proposed that 660 be the stormwater department. Um, so when we go through these numbers, the first two columns are going to be for the shop or for the garage. Um, and then the second two columns are going to be for what we're proposing for stormwater. So that's why you're going to see some differences there. Um, salaries, we budgeted $39,776 for salaries for the, um, for the mechanic that we had in that department. We spent, looks like we're going to finish out at about $46,508. Uh, but when we look at the, the salaries for 2000, 2020, 2020-2021, we're proposing 62,400, but that's going to be for two employees on that VAT truck. That's going to be a driver and a helper, a driver operator and a helper. Um, so that's why we've got the um, increase there in the salaries. Um, so insurance and bonds is going to follow because of the, the, the higher salaries toward insurance. Uh, 206 is what we've budgeted. We spent 12, 1290, we're going to uh, budget 300 for that. Workers' comp, um, 1805, we spent 1130, we're going to budget 1200 for, for the stormwater department. Retirement, 6189, spent 7237, we're going to budget 10,333 for those two employees. And then Social Security, $3,043, we spent 3558, we're going to budget 4774 for those two employees. So there again, the total for uh, budgeted for salaries or for personnel services was 58,179. Looks like we're gonna finish up at 66,883. But for stormwater with two employees, we're gonna be at 92,260. Um, auto operating expense, 2,000 what was budgeted this year. Um, we spent 984, but we're gonna increase that next year to 9,500 because we've gone from auto operating expense for a pickup truck to a VAC truck. Um, so we're going to have some ex uh, more expenses there. Then you've got machine and equipment, 1300 We spent 807 We're going to increase that to 2000 Small hand tools, 2600 is what we budgeted. We, uh, so we're going to finish up around 1783 We're going to budget 2000 for next year. Uniforms, 1000 uh, We spent $1,384. we are going to put 1800 in there because therefore there again we've got two employees. Uh, vehicle insurance is 530. We spent 615. We're going to budget 6615 for next year. Um, employee training, we budgeted a thousand hadn't spent any, uh, but we're going to put 200 in there for for the um, stormwater department. Other operating expenses is 1500. We spent 3101. We're going to budget um, 1860 for the um, stormwater department. So that's a total of 9930 is what we budgeted. We spent 86.74 and we're going to be at 17.975. Uh, capital outlay. This is one we need to look at. This is going to be one of our major expenses for the um, stormwater department. 
we didn't have anything in there for um, capital outlay for the uh, garage or for the shop, but we've got $180,000 stormwater bond that we have to pay back e every year. And that's gonna be coming out of this department and this, um, this, this line item. And then we've got the VAC truck payment, this $30,000. Um, actually the total VAC truck payment's a little over 52,000. 30,000 of it will come out of the stormwater budget and then the other, the remaining balance, 22,000 or so will come out of um, water and sewer. Because when we bought that truck, it was an agreement that we would use it half the time and they would use it half the time. So that's why they're paying part of the, um, part of the payment. And then we have the uh, stormwater reserve is uh, 52,493 is what we put in. It was, gives us a grand total for a stormwater department of 372.728 is uh, what we're putting in there for the budget. And with the stormwater increases that we've proposed, that is um, pretty much where we're at with the, with the numbers that we have for the stormwater increase. We would increase the revenue for that department to $372,728 a year. So, so let me ask a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think this is a, maybe more of a Howard question than an Alex question. Um, so is the stormwater supposed to be a part of the general fund or is it supposed to be a separate department, a separate entity? I'll have to ask our uh, internal accountant, Kim Vincent shoots here who's here today and she'll be here tomorrow. I'll ask her that question tomorrow. Okay, because I, okay, I, I don't, mm. I mean, from being doing, involved in with CPA firms, I don't think that stormwater is supposed to be in the general fund. That may let's be, check it out. let's check and find out. That may be correct. And if we have to do that, we'll, <clears throat> we'll move the, uh, the revenue account from stormwater and make stormwater its own uh, independent fund, but it would still stay a department as we've, uh, if you agree to everything we've outlined. <laughs> okay, but I, I think we got to take it out of the general fund, but okay, let's check it out and find out. Thank you, Howard. Any other questions? Alex, I'll ask a question. What is our term on 384 and what is our term for 386? 384, Howard, that's, that's is that 20 years? I'll, I'll take that. We've, we've made uh, one and a half years worth of payments on that bond. So that bond will be paid out in 2038. 2038, the um, 386, the vector truck payment, We've made one payment on that. We have nine more payments. We we could double up on the um, vector truck payments without penalty if we needed to, or add add extra money. Um, I it, after Mr. Milling asked about the different bonds last night, I called over and talked to Ben Ziegler's secretary today. He was out of pocket today, but he's supposed to call tomorrow. Thank you, Howard. Any other questions? All right, Howard, y'all want to move on? Alex, real quick. Uh, with the shop, with the back truck, it seemed to have made a difference as through last night. I know we had some flooding, but did it go down pretty good? It did. I rode, of course, um, I rode through um, last night after the council meeting. I left our, my office and went down Pearl Street. We got, we got something on Pearl Street, but I believe, and I called Chief Washington and Pat Cavanaugh. It was kind of ironic that we talked about the sinkholes on wells, but that storm drain actually where we're getting the flooding at on Pearl Street in front of um, Napa, Takis, um, First Citizens Bank, 
all of that goes down Pearl Street and goes to Well Street. It goes up under the crosses under the road and goes down Well Street and goes to that outfall. So they've got something going on there. So I told them to be on the lookout because they're allowed to have another collapse here shortly. Um, because I'm gonna put I didn't put them on it today because we were over on Park Street. But probably tomorrow we're gonna get on Pearl Street and start cleaning it out. So when we open that up, we're liable to we're liable to cause a problem for them on Well Street. But but it is helping. Um, we've had several bad areas. One being on Broad Street in front of right there close to Edwards Avenue. That used to flood real bad. It's not water's not standing there anymore. So I mean, we are making a, a difference. Uh, there's some areas that we do need to address. Um, I know Chestnut Street is a concern, um, but we've got to get permission to get on property. We've got a um, catch basin that's actually in between. It's on two property lines right there on Main Street. We've got to get into that to clean it out because all of that storm drain runs behind a bunch of houses in between, I believe it's Reed Street and Chestnut Street. So we can't we can't get through it through the yard, so we're going to try to go into that catch basin right there at Main Street and try to shoot back 500 feet and try to open it up, you know, as far back as we can um, and see if we can get it moving a little bit better in that direction. Thank you. Was well, uh, that um, drain between Reed and Chestnut, there were the citizens on Reed as well as Chestnut, Chestnut Street, have already agreed for y'all to be able to come through their property and, and clean that drain line out. So it's just a matter of y'all getting over there and getting whatever paperwork need to be signed, done, and getting it done. And I understand. But but agree with it. The, the problem that we have is a lot of those catch basins and entry points that we have on Reed Street are behind buildings or up under big trees, and we can't get the truck back there to it. Um, We've where it crosses under Chestnut and goes back towards Reed and, and hits that main drain. We've cleaned it out numerous times and we can get to that junction box, but we can't go any farther because that nozzle won't turn. Um, and so the only way that we can see that we're going to be able to get to it is going to be from Main Street. Um, but I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some kind of like logging mats to put down. So we drive the truck on that so that we don't tear the people's yard up. Because that truck, I mean, is, is that's the kind of a lower area. And if it's rained a lot, which it has, we're going to rut the yards up and tear the yards up. So I'm going to put the mats down so we can drive on the mats versus driving on the grass and tear the yard. We'll try to, try to do it as, as easy as we can so we don't make a mess for the homeowners or make a mess for us to have to clean up in the homeowner's yards. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, there are some entry points, but we can't get to all the entry points on Reed Street. That's the problem. That's why we're going to try to get it from Main Street, because we know we can get to that one. So would it be more feasible for you to um, try to clean that line out and fix the cash basins that, that has collapsed or just run another, another pipe? Which one is more feasible? Well, I talked to the state and asked them if they would be willing to tackle any portion of it try to run the storm drain down Reed Street and tie it in, put it out at the road, but they're not interested in that. Um, they're, I mean, they're, they're not going to spend the money to do that. I mean, it would be nice if we had the money to be able to do that, to get it out of the people's backyard so we could just abandon that line altogether. But, um, you know, we don't have the money and the state's not going to help us with it. So that would be a project we would have to look at down the line. We'll just have to keep fighting it for right now, I guess. Hey, you know, I'd like to mention the stormwater issue that we have also on Washington Street, uh, the Harkless House, where we had a cave-in there uh, four and a half years ago. We met with uh, SCDOT twice, asking them to help us with that project because it goes under uh, the sidewalk and out into the street now. And we're responsible for everything up to the sidewalk, but they're responsible for the street. We had an uh, urban engineering look at the cost of that and our part was up more than $100,000. And we only have $103,000 in that stormwater account right now. But DOT twice has refused to do their part to help us with that project. And I know Ms. Harkless has been calling us for years now asking why we haven't done anything yet. 
well, if we could get some cooperation from SEDOT, we could move forward and, and repair that large sinkhole, which is right in front of the old cotton mill where the CBD or the CBD plant is right now. So I know that, that is something when we had some folks campaigning last year that they were asking about it. And we've had uh, numerous calls from the Harkless family asking about it too. But I wanted, since everything's out here tonight, and this is viewable on uh, social media to, to let them know we have been looking at that. Thank you. Well, that's curious, it. How, how, are we reaching out? To, I'm sorry, Sheila, go ahead. Oh, good. So with that said, how also, I went down Farm Street today and um, uh, King, King, King Edwards Avenue and both of those streets, raw sewage is coming up on both those streets today. <clears throat> I just want the council and the, and the public to know that. Well, I wish somebody would have called and let, let us know. That's the first I've heard of that. Yeah. Um, well, every, right. time it, every time it floods and rains hard, that street does, does that. So it seemed like to me somebody from the city should have checked it for them to, 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 to see whether that was happening. It happened every time. So Howard, what does it? What reason does the uh, does the Department of Transportation give for not uh, wanting to repair, make these repairs? What I mean, how can they just ignore? Ma'am, I don't know. How can they ignore Wells and Orange Street? How can they ignore uh, Main Street, which is so bad that if, you know if you're going fast down the street, it tears up your car or the railroad uh, crossing at South Main Street, which they said they repaired, but it's even worse than it was before. And when I called about that this week, the uh, contractor said that SEDOT approved it. And I asked him if he'd go look at it. He said, sure, I looked at it, but SEDOT approved it. I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, ma'am. We- uh, I was gonna call about that railroad as well. It is it's terrible. It's awful. Um, um, it's the but, same uh, but when, when we approach them, do they not have to uh, respond and uh, uh, where it can be documented as to their reasons for not being able to do whatever we're asking them to do. Man, we, they... we, we've tried, uh, <laughs> you know, sitting down at the table uh, face to face to try it on the phone. We have uh, gone to higher ups in Columbia and or Florence and Columbia, um, but we haven't really brought down as, as the mayor was talking about last night, we haven't done everything that's in our arsenal yet, which would be the next step is to write letters to DOT commissioners and the head of SCDOT and the governor. I think we're, we're approaching that point now. I, uh, we as a staff, and I speak for everybody on staff that works with DOT, the local DOT folks, some of them are really good and they wanna work with you, but uh, some don't. And that's just the way it is. And you can ask Freddie, you can ask um, Lee, uh, I'm sorry, you can ask Alex. It's just the way that's been for, for the last few, few years. Well, then I think we're, Howard, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I think we're a few years past that point where we should be escalating it to those powers that be. Those letters need to be going out sooner than later. And I'm sure, I'm sure we'll all support that in whatever means we need to do it. Yeah, I, I would kind of echo that with just one ask is just maybe if we have specific questions or specific topics that we have an interest as a council to bring forward, that we write those down, send them a letter, ask for a reply, if we get none, then at that point escalate it and send letters out to the commissioners and whatnot. Um, but I just don't want to throw somebody under the bus because at the end of the day, they may not have a fund, I mean, they may have a funding issue uh, but when they do have funds, we want them to think favorably upon the town. But there's a balanced approach, and at some point, we definitely got to, you know, reach up to higher authorities and ask, can we get some help here? I um, just want to make sure we're asking appropriately first. DOT has, uh, has been asked specifically by myself to uh, give me a bid uh, because they said it was past, the old bid was uh, outdated. And I said, I just want a bid. I want to know the price of what it's going to cost. Don't give, keep giving me, they would give me from standing there in a three minute to five minute conversation with him. They gave me from 300000 to $500,000 to fix Well Street. That's a big, just, just tell me what it's going to cost. Give us the price. Let us know what we're going to do to get it done and still no response back from them. 
Um, again, that's what we're getting. So we can't do but so much unless we're going to hold them hostage and we can't do that. So um, it, it, it's yeah. going to have to go to escalate to the point of we, we're going to have to hold their feet to fire. So, Mayor, I'm taking yes. it then their responses is the reason that they're not doing it, that they don't have the monies to um, to tackle any of these well, things. Because well, that situation uh, just, you know, just simple, simple things, Elaine, like uh, this is the response I've gotten. Uh, I love them over there. DOT has treated me really nice, but the response they get that we're we're they're short 22 people. We've asked them to go down um, past Farm Street, down by the convenience store, take the, the front end loader and drag the road. Just a real quick, takes you 30 minutes to do it. Clean the side off, clean over by the church, uh, down by my uh, um, Walmart to clean the ditch area. They're out. Uh, we're going to do it. We're going to do it, and it never gets done. Um, you know so. Lane, I can tell you that I'm gonna do stuff. I'm gonna do stuff, but if I don't do it, then my word's no good. And that's what I—that's what I've got from them for the short period of time I've been there. Um, they, they're nice. They say they're gonna do it. They kind of just lay it to the side. Right. Well, to to Mr. Gardner's point, Mayor, I think if we, you know, if we've kept track of the times we've reached out, um, you know, <laughs> and have record of it via email or uh, just whatever means. Mm then document that, send that back and say, okay, this is what we've done so far. We've requested it. We've gotten a response, you know, basically in a nice way. Okay. Either give us an answer now or we're moving forward um, and go ahead and get so, that. Yeah. that that's, where we got, that's where we've got to agree. That's where we got to go with it. I mean, we got to go ahead and document that they're not replying back and, and not providing the service and uh, move forward with it. Yeah, that's real good. I just simply want to end with this and we'll move on. But a situation like what's at Miss at Miss Harkless house where there's a hole in her yard and there has been two people that has fallen through that. It is time now for somebody to react. Uh, Howard and Mayor, I would propose that if you have telephone conversations with somebody and they say they're going to do it, send them an email that says, thank you so much for talking with me. I appreciate you agreeing to do such and such within such and such a time frame." And it puts them on notice and you've got a written record. And so if they don't do it, you've got something to go back and you're not talking about, well, I didn't remember the conversation this way, that kind of thing. So right. Kevin F. Kevin Etheridge just uses that on a frequent basis to be sure that when he's dealing with the justice or other attorneys, uh, the, the conversation gets memorialized so he doesn't have to play that game with them in the future. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Rec Recreation's up next, so Lee Andrews is up to bat now. Good luck. <laughs> well, if I could get unmuted, can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Um, just want to go through and touch the high points. And if you got any questions, um, feel free to shoot them at me. Wanted to uh, take a look at personnel first. As you can see, salaries has gone up because I actually inherited a, a – new person this this fiscal year. So that's what is reflecting right there in the salaries. Um, and that's why it's gonna be over there. We went from we went from 133,670 to 154.735. Um, and that's put us over. If you look down and a lot of this stuff we're not going I don't think we're gonna come close in light bills. Um, if you go down and look at Baldwin Gym uh 220.01 the baseball and softball at spring at 220.03. I don't think that um, we're going to come close to spending that kind of money at either place. So we, we should come in under budget a little bit better than what we are right there. Um, we've, we've gone up a little bit in postage and, and that's just to, to take care of some of the stuff that we're mailing out. Um, but you can look through that, the operating expenses right there. And we're pretty much going to be under budget there. Um, 
we go to the second page there, page 45, coming down the, the telephone. We, we've had a couple of, we had one time back in July or so where we had somebody to come out and had to take a look at the telephone. That's why we were over a little bit there. Um, but everything else, we're gonna come under budget. Any questions? Lee, I've got a question about 220.06, the Memorial Center Tennis Courts. Yes, sir. Is that the same thing as the Bill Kane Courts? Yes, sir. All right. And the 2000 we've spent has just been trying to do some things until we have to decide what we could do about that major expenditure. Well, it, it, we've had to do some work inside the building up there too. Some of that money probably should be um, allocated back and put on the, let me find the line item, 284, where it's the tennis program. Um, we did have to do some work in the building um, and it probably got put over there by mistake for some reason, but that that's mainly light bills at 220.06. Lee, the garden club ladies have talked about repainting the Memorial Center um, building. Is yes. that something like in the budget or was that from the previous year um, you had funds for? We've got we've got funds for it. Okay. For that little bit of paint they want to use, yeah, we've got we've got painting supplies um that we've been using and it'll re up this year. We'll be we'll be good there. Thank you, Lee. Unless they want to paint it pink or something like that, then we'd have to use a lot of paint. <laughs> um we went down a little bit in building repairs and facility repairs. A lot of time we we had some major work done in the past year and a half to our gyms and shouldn't be any problems as far as leaks or anything like that. We haven't had any, and with all the rain that we've had here lately, I haven't seen anything. And we were having a problem in, in Baldwin, but we've got that taken care of. We had a downspout that was clogged that was causing water to back up and, and come back inside the building. But we had the downspout widen and, um, We've cut some trees down that's kind of clogging up everything. So I think we've taken care of that, but we dropped those. That's 228 and 229, um, respectively. We dropped those down. Small hand tools we dropped down. Uh, hardware, building material we left the same. Painting supplies we've left the same. Uniforms was a little bit more cost this year, just because I did pick up an extra person. Um, of course, vehicle insurance, all that stuff is, is out of our hands. That's just something we get. Now, other operating expenses, that 279, that has been my catch-all account. Um, we've done a lot more than what we normally do. And then you've got some other accounts that I haven't touched, senior citizens, the tennis program, pool, chemical supplies, stuff like that. We haven't had to touch it yet. Might not have to touch it until July. So It'll all balance out, and you see we come in under it, 164.575 right there. You got any questions there? Lee, this is Howard. I just have one question. What I don't know what it is. What is Inland Marine, 262.4? I think that has something to do with the bridges at Williamson Park. Okay. That's correct. That is, that is the uh, – yeah, oh. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, just sir. didn't know what it was. Yes, sir. I, look, when I first come on board, I, I was looking around for the boat. <laughs> we don't have one. I was kind of thinking about where's, where was the lake. I, don't, I wasn't sure. I missed something. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, capital outlay. We, we left everything the same. Machines and equipment was the catch-all in that one. And if the guys have needed a, a paint sprayer or a hammer or something like that. It just all falls into there. Um, you got any questions about that? And th this year has been, this year and going into next year and not knowing um, how many people we're going to end up with, moving in the direction of getting the sports complex. Just have to wait and see. 
Uh, we didn't want to change too much right now, just to see where we were going. Any questions? All right. We'll move over here to 725, which is page 48. And that is the, the Williamson Park um, committees stuff. That That is Eddie Lott and Mr. Willie Hudson. That $11,000 is the Williamson Park contract that we give to the committee that they pay um, Eddie and Willie out of. And that's their, you know, their operating expense is basically their gas and stuff that they use inside the park. Um, same thing for mission machines and equipment is, is equipment that they get that they use inside the park. Um, if they need something, they let me know and we get it for them. It comes out of this um, account. And Eddie Lott is really good at taking care of stuff. So as you can see, we haven't spent a whole lot, but they need, they're need they gonna need some things. Chainsaws get worn out in there constantly. So we Please. left them. Yes. Why don't we tell them a little bit about the Williamson Park Fund and Williamson Park Committee for those who are new and don't understand that. The Williamson Park Fund is funded by the Williamson Park Committee. There is a committee that is um, oversaw by, by myself, and they actually run fundraisers. They do, they do a park run, which got canceled this year because of COVID. And other fundraisers such as the the barbecue in the park that they had in December and they take that money and they put it into the Williamson Park Fund and all that money goes back into Williamson Park and they have done an outstanding job down there um I think we've about got all the trees that are going to fall to fall and Willie's been busy cleaning them up and it's it's just that is something that is very underutilized there at Williamson Park. And I've, I've said it before. And I know people think I'm crazy, but we have people that actually stop through on their way on vacation just to visit that park, just to see some of the, the wildlife that is in there. So we, we're big thanks to that, that committee. Let, let me also mention that they have their own checking account also. So it's independent of the, uh, of our city budget. And so a lot of the bills that come in for Williamson Park come out of that account. We also have um, one or two individuals that make sizable contributions through their foundations uh, to that park on an annual or semi-annual basis. That's right. That $11,000, that, that, that the line item 204, that is not the entire um, amount that, that, that is not their entire amount that they pay those guys. Williamson Park Committee actually put some money in two salaries too, and they're paid through the Williamson Park account. Any questions about that? All right, flipping over to 750. These are our expenses. Um, athletic equipment, that's any equipment that we've had to buy um and sometimes we i did this this year i when we had to redo a ball field which we had to redo bowling manor this year um we actually redid the inside of the concession stand we redid the dugouts um we've had to do some electrical work out there so all the other equipment that we've gotten plus that um put us over there but we were able to do all that work in house. So we saved money in that aspect, but to get it back up and running, um, we had to do that. And then daggum COVID, COVID come along. So we haven't been able to enjoy it. Um, everything else you can see there is, is self-explanatory. Any questions? That pretty much that that if you ain't got no questions, that concludes the budget for me. Uh, Lee, what are your thoughts about uh, the baseball season? We abbreviated baseball season. We've been thinking about having for uh, for the summer. We have been as as staff as county staff. Um, been in talks with Hartsville. Been in talks with Lamar, and um, 
I, I don't know right now. I know the governor come out today and said that he wanted to open up for, um, you know, youth sports and adult sports to be able to come back on the field. My biggest fear, and I don't, I'm not one of these people that run around with a mask on. I don't, I don't fear it, but at the same time, I don't know enough about it to not fear it. Also, um, I don't mind. I don't. It doesn't bother me that we get kids out there, if we get coaches out there, and they they practice and stuff. What bothers me is everything that we have to go through to screen everybody that's going to be out there. And I just don't know if we have the staff in place to be able to do that comfortably. Uh, we're going to take the next week or so and look at it because I know the 30th was the day that they're looking at opening. Florence County actually canceled all their spring seasons and stuff today. Marlboro County has canceled theirs. Chesterfield County has canceled theirs. Um, the trend seems to be the error on the side of caution. I want our kids to play, but I don't want them to play at the expense that they're going to get sick and potentially somebody die. I couldn't, I couldn't handle that. Um, so if we put them out there, we're going to put them out there with the utmost safety in mind. I know that had been some discussion. I just wanted to hear maybe any updates that you had on that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, is there anything else that uh, any of our mayor council members would like to ask or for us to go over this evening? Well, wasn't it something that Kevin, the lawyer was supposed to research for us and get back to us with something? What was that? Are you talking about from last night or Monday night? Was it Monday night? I just remember, I'm just remembering something that Kevin was supposed to research. I think too, Sheila, I think there were several people that had some takeaways. Um, not, I think you're right, not just Kevin. I think there were a couple of that we asked for and um, got, hey, I'm, I'm, get sorry. Back to us. I'm sorry guys, I got kicked off and I don't know why, but I'm back. So I, I missed uh, what y'all were uh, uh, talking about. I just caught the tail end of that. I, Takeaways. I, I, What's that? I remember, I remember something that you were supposed to research for us. And I think there was something Lisa Rock was supposed to bring back to us about those part-time employees or something. I know those were two things that, that we were supposed right. to do. And I think Chief Washington had something I'd asked about a $4,000 difference on something as well, well that, several that, things and i apologize but what in particular you're talking about from the other day uh, uh at a meeting uh at the meeting that i was supposed to uh get back with you on yeah uh, but there's been a couple of things and first again i apologize i got uh, thrown off when y'all were talking about the dot uh uh situation and, and what i was going to say before i, I got kicked off if y'all want to get me something with some specificity uh, uh, y'all mentioned the railroad tracks and things of that nature. Uh, you know, there's a way to do this tactfully and also uh, air our grievances. Um, and, and I don't mind doing that whatsoever. And that's the, the thing, the last thing that I heard y'all were talking about. I know y'all have gone way past that, but um, just wanted to make you aware of that. And I think, are you talking about the uh, gym uh, memberships? Um, uh, that's it. That's it. Okay. I don't remember, but I knew it was something. And, and, and what's happened so far, there's a statute, and I don't have it here uh, with me, but there's a statute that's on point. Um, and I'm also trying to get an advisory opinion. I talked to a young lady with the uh, Ethics Commission. Um, and so I'll have you an answer, um, I would say, by next week. But the statute itself um, um, says, and from talking with her, and again, she's going to get an advisory opinion, the fact that we've already uh, uh, done it um, and the fact that the gym memberships are already in place, um, there doesn't need to be anything that's done. If we do anything, there's a set of rules for people over 30,000 uh, uh, people that live in the city and a set of rules for a uh, municipality with under 30,000. Um, and the um, rules are such that um, y'all can have a, um, a, uh, a, a separate uh, meeting about this. And if you want to bid it out and see if uh, uh, Somebody else can do it at a competitive uh, price. And of course, it, as the mayor uh, knows, just recuse himself from uh, those meetings, y'all can do it that way. Or you can leave it and stand pat. Um, 
but again, she's going to offer an advisory opinion. But if I was a betting man, that's what the uh, opinion is going to come back uh, and say that we have those options because we are a municipality under 30,000. But the fact that it's already uh, transpired, we don't need to do anything. But if we want to do something, we can uh, bid it out. And of course, his uh, 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 his gym can also bid um, and, and be part of that uh, uh, bid process as well. And the only thing he has to recuse himself from is those particular uh, meetings. Okay, that makes, that makes sense. But, but, but again, we don't have to do anything, or we can take that, um, that, uh, the, 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 that we can do that. Um, but whichever one uh, y'all want to do is up to y'all as a council. Whichever one y'all want to do. Okay. But I still need to get, I want to get, a. am going to call the Municipal Association to get a clarity for myself or understanding. Because I think that's a conflict of interest, but I want to find that for myself. So I'm going to call on myself and ask him. Sure. And I talked to Charlie Barano and he's going to uh, direct you to the ethics and I'll get you uh, the ethics commission, the young lady I talked with. Um, I'll get you her number. And that's precisely what she said is that since it's already transpired, we don't have to do anything or we can do something about it, which would be to have a um, uh, uh, to have a, a meeting where y'all uh, bid it out and have other people make uh, bids as well. Okay. In the workshop, in the workshop that I that I attended that dealt with the ethics. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it it was it was quite it was made quite clear as an as an elected official in the municipal said it is a conflict of interest to enter in any kind of contract that leaves financial that would indicate that uh, your being on the council or being an elected official influence the fact that you have a contract with the city. Yes, ma'am. It was, it was really and, clear, <laughs> you and, know, that was the case. And I'm trying, <laughs> and I'm trying to find the actual uh, statute now um, if y'all will bear with me a second, I have it in here. If y'all, in fact, if y'all want to move on to something else, let me try to find that I can tell you exactly what the statute itself says. If y'all give me just a couple of minutes. But anyways, they were just frowning against it. Yeah, yes, ma'am. And, and, and again, uh, uh, what her point was, the young lady, and I'll have her name for you. I just don't have her here with me. Um, but the fact that it's already transpired, we wouldn't need to do anything since it's already happened. Or... Again, you can uh, uh, have a meeting and uh, have bids go out and have people um, uh, 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 just bid for the same. Uh, uh, I've got it right here, section five twenty one thirty. Um, and what it says in section two um, is that a, a, a municipal a municipal officer may enter into a contract whenever the contract is awarded to him as low bidder after a public call for bids. And the contract is allowed by the unanimous vote of the city or town council upon each particular contract. Mm -hmm. In all fairness to the mayor, uh, that was bidded out a number of years ago. He bid against uh, the YMCA for those, uh, and uh, he was he was quite lower than the YMCA's bid, and that's why he got the he got the quote for it. Well, he oh. wasn't the mayor then. He's the mayor now. When right. he did that, he wasn't the mayor. So in all fairness, if you're going to do it right and proper, which y'all seem to have a problem with doing right and proper, it needs to be built out again and done fairly and properly. Evan, can you please get that information from the right people and disseminate that accordingly so that there, there is no further question on it, so we could just put this to rest once and for all? Sure, sure. And, 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 and again, that's the uh, statute. If y'all want to, I will uh, copy it and I'll send it to each of you in, in the next couple of minutes. Oh, but yes, ma'am. The statute is not, I think it's about the ethics. Yes, ma'am. And that was, yes, ma'am. And that's okay. why I, I talked to the lady from the ethics commission and, and, and she said, we don't have to do anything again because of the fact that it's already in place. However, because we are a municipal less than okay. 30,000, we can do something. Um, um, it would be up to y'all and it would have to be by unanimous vote. Um, uh, and that's the part I left out, uh, when I was speaking a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
say the fact that he said uh, when we when when it was entered into it is and the and the fact that it since that part that he's become an elected official in that municipality because it, it was already in place it's acceptable is what you uh, is that well it, it, it would be y'all's choice if y'all wanted to have a uh, a meeting about it um and have a vote about it you are you, you can do that um the way it, and if it was over thirty thousand, it'd be a different process. But but the fact that we're a municipality under thirty thousand, that would be the process um, uh, uh, the, that he would recuse himself, um, and there'd be a public call. Uh, okay. So the amount that's vote, the amount figures in too. Okay, well that's good. I I just want to be clear, and I'm not trying to get off as a good deal. So <laughs> we just need to. I just well, 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 I said, we just need. Clear because we don't want it to be that he's getting special treatment when Step others feel that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Mayor. Am I allowed to say anything? Oh, oh sure. Uh, okay. Uh, just so that it's public record, it's $5,000 for a year. It was about 10 years ago that uh, I won that bid, eight or 10 years ago, that I won that bid against the Y, which bid at $60,000. And uh, so for 200 employees, including their families, comes out to about $2 a month so that uh, the public knows uh, the yeah. constituents. Right. Yeah. And y'all are welcome to do whichever you feel free for. Yeah. As we I just say whatever is being done, as long as it's being done legally in the proper way. That's, that's perfect. All. Fine. That's all that matters. Yep. That's it. Whatever y'all decide. Bubble. Bubble. So we're at 803. Does anyone else have anything else on the budget? Councilman Nettle, uh, this is Chief. Hey, Chief. I'm interested in Lisa's information on those two part-time employees. We didn't get the information on that last night. Which one? The question about Lisa and the, and the two part-time employees. Ma'am, what was the question? I didn't present the question. Uh, Curtis Boyd presented the question. I had, asked, I had asked if we were able to hire uh, a full-time person instead of two part-time people. And my understanding was that one of the part-time people had not shown up and the other one was only showing up part of the time. Well, one of the part-time people is um, leaving us at the end of the month. Um, and I have found another person who is willing to work. I'm waiting to, to see back what his uh, application is. Um, and you know, drug tests and all that kind of stuff. As Are well. we his oh. willingness to work full time? Uh, I was presented to him as part time, so um, I can't answer or speak for him. Now, uh, myself, I chose to go the route of having two part time workers uh, based on what I saw when I had just one worker. Um, when there was one worker, and then we had uh, Miss Rhonda Brown, which everybody's very familiar with. Um, with the garden club helping out with him um, when that worker was with Rhonda there were two sets of hands they could I don't want to more efficiently can and we please, hello can we please stop for one second I don't know whose job it is to stop but I guess it's mine tonight um I don't think we're allowed to talk and I'll say it again and I'll say it again we are not allowed to specifically talk about employees if I'm wrong Howard Garland or Kevin Etheridge please um correct me but just for clarity i think we might can talk about employees um as far as em employing a full-time or a part-time position i think that's all fair conversation but you got to watch in yeah, public yeah. meetings personalities you can't call yeah. names etc yeah. brian brian's exactly right you can refer yeah, to a salary or an fte but you can't you can't call names or you can't you can't bring attention to that and I haven't I called any names of any employees. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, this, you have. I, I, think, I think we'd be safer doing this at an uh, uh, executive session. That's up to y'all. Yeah, I'd love to talk about this employee issue at executive session. Um, I think we all have different opinions on whether we want full-time or part-time employees, but we don't need to talk specifically about a certain employee working with Rhonda and all that jazz. But I don't think she called anybody name. I think she was just describing the job position itself. Yes, ma'am. I did not call any employees' names. I didn't hear a but if, about 
don't have so, to talk about Elaine Reed, but if I say that I'm talking about the council person who has dreadlocks on my council, it's only one person in particular. If I say that I'm talking about the employees working with Rhonda, it's only one person in particular. <laughs> I'm not sure how you know how many how much descriptive I should have to be to explain this situation. It's a legal issue. Let's just be careful. And, and I think you're right, Brian. I think just to err on the side of caution, it'll be best done in um in executive session. Okay. I'm with you. She's and watching. Please... Did you have an update on something? Sir, uh, I, and I apologize. Can you remind me, please, sir, what it was I was supposed to get for you? I, I'm sorry. I was just looking for it, and that's okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll send yeah. you an email tomorrow, and I'll copy everybody on it. It was just, okay. it was a $4,000 question that I had. And I yeah. think it was just, I think it was about placement of the, where it was put into the budget. And I think it, it, it was just clarity. It was no okay. big deal, but I'll, I'll, I'll look back at my notes and send that out to you all. Okay. Yes, sir. And I'll, and I'll respond as, as quickly as I can. Right, we're fine. Thank, I know we covered a lot. That's okay. Thanks. <laughs> yes, sir. And I'll just add on that there's some couple other finance questions that people want to break down of different department numbers. Um, if we could just make sure we get that carbon copy to all of council so everybody can be informed on the subjects, I'd appreciate it. All right, well, we have any I'd more like questions? to thank staff for their work. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Howard. I was going to thank staff for all. I was going to thank staff for all their work on this, especially Lisa, for uh, moderating the meetings through the Zoom platform and keeping up with all the items in the budget. I know it's a new experience for everyone, and we had a hiccup this evening, uh, having to start thirty minutes uh, late. But there's a lot of other communities in this area, in the state, and counties that aren't doing what we're doing. And we have not missed a meeting, a single meeting since COVID-19 started. And thanks, thanks to y'all for helping us push the ball down the field. Amen. Definitely. Okay, thank you, everyone. Having said that, can I make a motion that we uh, end our meeting tonight? We adjourn. <laughs> I'll set that motion. Thank you, bunch. <laughs> and said and thank you, administration, all right. for all the work you are doing and mayor and council. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank good night. You. Have a good night. Thank you all. Have a good Everyone have a good, have a good night. Nice evening. <laughs>